Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad all of you could make it to another of our many webinars. My name is Cherish, and I'll be your host. Dave Tucker, the first, is this morning's presenter, and Dave has spent many, many years in the green industry. One of his first jobs was mowing for Lawnright, and that's the company who later moved on to create Belkey and Wright Mowers, Wright Manufacturing. Um, Dave moved from mowing grass to managing the crews and eventually began developing software that they so desperately needed, which is the same software all of you use today, except what you're using now is much more developed and advanced than what Dave originally created. A few years later, Dave decided to create his own lawn care company to test Clip on, um, as well as all the industry secrets he'd learned from experience and his thousands of customers. Starting Clip Lawn Care and finding out that many of his theories were true is what inspires him to share that information with you today. This morning, he'll go over identifying the right customers, defining who the right customer is for your company, how to find and convince them that they should use your service, and etc. We sincerely hope that this information we offer here will help you like it's helped us and many of our other customers. An interesting fact about Dave is that he's been an entrepreneur since he was only six years old. And if any of you were an entrepreneur even earlier, we'd love to hear. You can type it into the questions box or send us an email. I have one announcement before we get started. As many of you know, our site visits have been completely booked since about November, and we're still constantly getting requests for more. We decided to offer a great alternative to a site visit that will work in much the same way, except it'll be here in Frederick, Maryland, which is just north of DC. We've officially named it the, a customized clip consultation, and it will be a two-day in-depth consultation on February 28th through March 1st, and that's a Friday and Saturday. The first day, we'll have presentations prepared both on clip and general um, general business principles, excuse me. Then on the second day, each company will have one-on-one -on -one time with a CLIP representative, representative going over your data, questions that you have about CLIP, etc. A normal site visit is $2,400 plus travel expenses, and we're lowering that price by 25% to only $1,800, so it's a great, great opportunity for you all to come at a lower price. Um, and an alternative to a site visit, with much the same visit, and perhaps even more with the number of CLIP representatives that will be available to help you. We want to keep it very small so we can offer lots of individual help, and very small means only four companies. I just am about to send out an email um, introducing the opportunity to all of our CLIP users. If you have any interest at all, you can contact your account manager um, as soon as you can for all the details before all the spots fill up. And an easy number for that is 1-800-635-8485. I'll go ahead and send that number out to all of you in just a couple of minutes. And I think that's everything I have here, so let's go ahead and get started, Dave. All right. Um, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, talking about our, our customers, finding the, the right customer. If that uh, clip consultation is of interest to you, like Chair said, make sure that you contact the 800-635-8485 number as soon as possible because we are only accepting four. Um, but that was because we had so many site visits that people wanted us to do, and we just can't do them, so we're squeezing one in. In the uh, in a in a weekend, let's talk about finding the perfect customer. Now, why in the world would that be even um, interesting or, or necessary? Well, we've been talking about the four secrets, and I know that this webinar is labeled as secret number three, but it's actually secret number one in my in my four secrets. Sorry, we didn't go in order, but we went in the order of of what I thought was most pertinent at the time of the year that we gave the uh, the the webinar. So this is secret number one, which is finding your per first customer. As one person said, nothing happens until a sale happens. So you could create the best company, you could have the, the best situation, the best employees, and the best everything, best equipment and everything else that you possibly could have, even financial backing and everything. But if you don't have a customer, you have nothing. <laughs> you have nothing. And there's no way that you can <clears throat> call yourself a business until you have customers and so that's what we're going to be talking about today is finding the best customer so let's go over the four secrets to success that I've been talking about over these past webinars and the first one is marketing the $20 special that's what we're talking about today 
The second one is piecework paid by the job. We talked about that a few weeks ago. And if you want to uh, um, have a refresher, just go back to our website and look, look that one up. The uh, third one is revenue tracking, who pays me the most. Again, we've already done that, and that's up on the, on the website. You can go see that. And that's knowing which is your best customer. So right now it's finding the customer. And then um, the secret number three would be making sure that you have the best customers. And then the last one that we, we will be doing in a few weeks is called knowledge systems becoming useless. Um, some people ask me, what do you do in your company, Dave? And I say, as little as possible. Okay, let's say, let's establish once again um, why I might have something to say to this. And this is our clip lawn care. These are straight from the QuickBooks uh, reports, the P&L reports, profit and loss. And you can see I'm, I'm going through October because come, to, uh, come November and December, we start uh, spending money to try to reduce our taxes. But uh, so I think this is a better view of where we ended with the company. We actually ended at $700,000 in sales. I think it was $2,000 shy of that. Um, but we ended up in 700000 Now, notice here what we have is we have a 33% increase in the top line. So we actually grew 33% last year. And if you think about that, if you're growing at a 30 or 25 or 30 or 40% rate um, per year, it's hard to keep track of everything unless you have the right systems in place. And I think that one thing that we do really well around here is creating the right systems. And that's part of why you have CLIP and, and what's going on with that. So... We ended at, at the end of Janu of October, we had $648,304 in sales versus $487,000 from the year before. That's a 33% increase, excuse me. Now, if you look at the bottom line, this is where it really gets impressive. If you look at the bottom line on this, our net income last year, or the, I guess the year before last, was 33403 which is not bad. It's a respectable amount of income. But look at the income from 2013, 166,507. Um, we ended up paying our manager around uh, close to $90,000 for his work. And on top of that, as the owners, and I'm, I'm a co-owner with Glenn Zire. Most of you know Glenn Zire. Uh, between the two of us, we own uh, Clip Lawn Care. I'm a co-owner with Glenn Zire. We ended up with around 110 dollars to $120,000 of owner benefit um, at the end of the season. So uh, paying our manager almost almost a six-figure a salary, and on top of that, ending up as owners without really doing much in the company of $110,000 is uh, not bad. And that's why we're here, and that's why I can speak to this. And I think that the, it's necessary for me to talk about these kind of numbers to show you guys that I do know sort of what you're going through, and I know at least some of the roadmap to getting to this point. And it's not because I'm so smart and I've come up with it, but ma mainly because we have 12,000 clip users out there. We do these site visits. We collect the best ideas that we have from each person and try to implement them and see how they work. So let's talk about one of the big things is having your customers. Again, let's go back to the philosophy of business. I know a lot of this is is overview or or review from previous ones, but we need to have this in mind if we're going forward. So an organization is just a business is, or a company is just an organization that stands between customers and employees. Uh, uh, an, a business is somebody, it's not even me, it's not even even me as the, as the president of whatever business I happen to have, but it's, it's not even me because I am an employee. I get paid on a W-2 form uh, like everybody else does. But what a business is, is it finds customers that need or, or request or want a service, in this case we're talking about service business, a service, and on the other side we find employees that are willing to do that service to get paid. So customers that are willing to pay to get a service done and employees that are willing to do a service and get paid. So we talked about the piecework system and how you increase your employees. We talked about the uh, job costing, how you... How you um, uh, get better customers, but now we're going to talk about what customers are the best customers. So if we can raise, and here's the here's the key to this whole thing, and by the way, a, a lot of this stuff is already in my book also, so uh, you probably uh, remember that we published a book a little less than a year ago, and it's called Lawn Maintenance in the Beautiful Business. So if you're interested in getting a copy of that, also you can get it on Amazon.com 
or you can call us, either one. But if you increase your customers, if you get better customers, and you increase your productivity on your employees, it will pull the business up and your business will get better. So that is what we're looking at um, when we talk about these things. So let's let's talk about this, and we're we're going to have a number of different um, a number of different criteria that determine what is a good customer. A good customer, and I and they're not necessarily in order of of priority, but at least I want I want us to have a little bit of an order. So the first thing is a good customer is in the right area. Now, why is why do we define a good customer as being in the right area? Well, because travel time is a killer to productivity and efficiency. And there's another webinar that I've given called Management by Numbers, and it actually we talk about how how if we can take somebody off from overhead, if we can take five dollars of, of payroll off from overhead and turn it into productivity. So you take somebody who's in the office and you turn around and you get them to be productive and do a service um, to your customers, it can have a, an increase on your bottom line of a huge percentage. So the more that you can take people out of overhead and put them into productivity more profitable your company is going to be. And so when you take a, a travel time, travel time is overhead. That's all it is. It's just it's it's overhead. And we go over we go over this over and over and over with our customers out there with you all is like how do I track travel time? How do I track travel time? How do I track travel time? And we keep on coming back and saying travel time is part of doing the job. Because how in the world are you going to mow the grass unless you actually show up in a truck with a mower? Um, so travel time is part of the job and should be tracked along with the job, but you can see right away that everything's about your dollars per hour, and if I have to take a long time in travel time, I'm, it's going to kill my productivity and efficiency. This is such a big deal that it's worth about $40,000 a year for a company with 10 crews that have three men on each crew to move its starting location 15 minutes closer to the customers. Let me let that thing sink in a little bit. It's it worth it's worth at least forty thousand dollars a year for a company with ten crews with three men on each crew to move their facilities fifteen minutes closer to their customers. It's a huge amount of money, and of course, the bigger you get, the more that becomes. And I I've known of companies that actually travel forty five minutes to an hour to get to their get to their first customer. That is such a killer. You've got to change that. You've got to consider making a, a, a field office, you've got to consider moving somehow, getting your guys in closer where they can get to work faster and they can get to they can get to work. I'm in the process right now of buying a new um, facility where we're gonna we're going to put the uh, put the lawn maintenance company and the software company and we're gonna put it all together in one spot. And I've and we've done the we've done the math and it's almost um, as that as that uh, movie would say inconceivable you know it's almost inconceivable how much money it can save us if we go in so we're willing to pay quite a bit of money for this piece of property because it will put us closer um, and more efficient and more productive into our into our company so how do I come up with that number well if you just take a random number let's say it's a half hour of driving um, because it's 15 minutes there and 15 minutes back right so that's a that's equal to a half hour times 10 crews times three guys times 36 weeks times $45 an hour because that's what you charge, or in our case, that's what we charge per hour for our customers, we would have a loss of $24,300 in lost sales per year. A $40,000 move then would recover in less than, two, less than two years, and it'd be worth a whole lot more than that. So you, you know, depending on how your ROI, your return on investment is, you could find that it's, it's going to return a whole lot more. So this is a number, if I'm going to look for a customer, my first priority is it's got to be in the right place. Okay, I want to show you, this is again a job costing report from Clip Lawn Care, recent, I just pulled this up a few days ago when I'm doing this. Now notice that when we, we had a, uh, there's a webinar on reports, and, uh, and Dave the Second goes through these reports, this job costing report, quite in detail. One of the things you can do is at the bottom left here, you see that we have every pin that's red is going to be below $35 per man hour. Every pin that's green is going to be above fifty dollars per man hour, and I noticed right away. You guys probably see that too. Is right away there's a there's a red pin in the upper left hand corner there near Thompson's corner um, of the. And I thought, okay, who's red? <laughs> because you know we pay attention to that. Well, you see it on the second on the list. It's it's my house. Well, we get zero income from my house, so of course it's going to be red. It's a zero dollars per hour, but. Um, 
so that's what that red one is. But what I really wanted to show you with this with this um, map is if you do this with your own customers, you'll find the same thing. Is you'll find that the ones that are clustered. Notice how there's how the green ones that are clustered are the ones that are green. The yellow ones kind of are off by themselves. And just take a look at this, and you'll see that right away. And this is a, a report you could run on your system right now, and you could you could run this as long as you have MapPoint. Um, along with Clip, and you can run this system, and you can look at it, and you would see where when we cluster jobs together, we get, you know, it's green if it's above fifty dollars per man hour. That's what we're making on all those green ones. It's fifty dollars per man. Yellow is in between, so yellow is like okay, it's right there. But I'd like to turn them all green, except for mine and in my my house. But otherwise, I'd like to tell, turn them all green. But you see that clustering them makes them green. So what constitutes a good customer is location. Location, 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 as they say. So we need to we need to know first off if we're going to go find good customers. Our first thing is we got to find them in a place that we want them, and that's where you come into the problem of of some slick salesman walking through your office door trying to sell you a yellow page ad. Why do we never push yellow pages or radio ads or anything like that? Why? Because we understand at least in our company, we understand that unless we cluster them together, we're not going to make the money that we need to make. And we're not going to be able to be competitive with our price to our customers. So by clustering, if you do a yellow page ad, you're getting calls from all over the area. And I, we don't want to do all over the area. We're very, very particular about who we want to do business with. So the first one is location. Where is this property located? That's extremely important to us. The next one the next uh, um, criteria for a good customer would be he's able to pay the bill. <laughs> you say, whoa, that's right. Well, you know, how many non-paying customers do you need to be successful? Just let that th sink in for a little bit. How many non-paying customers do you need to be successful? And you better answer none. It ought to be the answer that it is. And I, that came to me a few years ago, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, wow, why in the world am I worried about non-paying customers? I shouldn't be worried about them at all. If they're not, if a customer's not able to pay the bill, by definition, they aren't a customer. They're a headache, okay? So first off, you have to have a policy in place. Um, and then use Clip Exceed to prevent the losses. Now, you notice that I'm showing you here part of it with the work bank is it says right there in that gray box right there, it says do not load work for invoices that are X number of days overdue and at least this number of dollars. What that will do is that will actually go back to QuickBooks and it will figure out whether this customer, okay, Mrs. Smith is due to be done today, ready to print out route sheets or send them to clip to go or something like that. And what this will do is this will stop Mrs. Smith from going on to the route sheet even at all if she owes you money of X number of days overdue, let's say it's 14 days overdue, and it's at least, and it's more than $10, let's say. So um, you do have to have that. You have to have a number in there as to how much, because if somebody owes us 50 cents, we don't care. I mean, there's probably an error in bookkeeping, or maybe they wrote the check a little wrong or something like that. But it has to be more. It has to be a substantial amount of money. Now we started using this policy in our in our software um, back in 2012, 2011, and um, some companies actually run a credit score on their customers before they get them, and that that gives you a good a good idea, a good indication as to whether um, this customer is actually going to pay their bill or not. That's the whole point of a credit score, right? But look at the numbers here for CLC. In CLC in 2011, we had we ended up the year with six thousand three uh, five hundred sixty five dollars in bad debt that we wrote off. We couldn't collect; it was done. That's a two percent. Well, notice that we're trying to run anywhere from twenty to thirty percent profit. So a two percent, it, it's a hit. Why? Why? Why do we give that money? I mean, six thousand five hundred dollars, we just gave away. We just said, yeah, sure, we'll go over out and we'll do do work for you and not anything. I mean, that's a that's a lot of red pins. I get it that I do that they do it for me because I'm the owner and they mow my grass for free. But we don't want to do that with anybody else. <laughs> that's they don't have that that. So on three hundred thousand dollars in sales, we ended up with six thousand five hundred in bad debt. Not bad by some comparisons. But in two thousand twelve, we implemented a policy that said we're not allowing you to get more than two weeks overdue. As soon as you're fourteen days overdue, which means we have a maximum of three cuts. Um, in your in your system, we are cutting you out. 
we're just stopping. We're not mowing anymore. And, you know, you get the person that calls you and says, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and blah, 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 blah. And we said, no, this is our policy. This is just the way it is. Why? Because we are looking to have these gold, these good customers. Okay, the good customer is one that can actually pay you. And so notice what happened to our collectibles. Our collectibles went down from 6,500 to 1,700, but our sales went up to 530,000. And in 2013, which is last, last year, we had $1,900 in, in bad debt. Look, we're going down. We're now at a 0.2% on $700,000 in sales. So how did we do this? Well, we did it one way was creating really strong, um, really strong policies that say, if you're not paying us, we're not doing, we're cutting it out. Now, that, that's another place where I like residential lawn mowing because to cut one customer out is not going to hurt you. But if you're doing uh, if you're doing commercial lawn mowing, and by the way, we got a couple of notices over the winter from a couple of, of commercial places that we do small things like one is a Chick Fil A, another one was a, a Bennigan's or restaurant or something like that. Um, so we do very small small bits of commercial, hardly anything at all. But but if you have if you have a commercial account that's doing twenty percent of your income, twenty percent of your gross sales, you're going to be very reluctant to cut them off when they don't pay you. But like I said, we got two notices over the winter of companies that had gone bankrupt. And the and basically we're getting a, a letter from the judge saying, stop collecting because this guy doesn't have any money. He can't do it. So we just lost that money completely. And that's one of the reasons why we don't like to do um, commercials. It can happen. And if it's doing 20% and you put six months worth of work into the commercial property and then they don't pay you, that that's a huge hit on your bottom line. Um, the other thing we do is we require credit cards um, for payment, and we just ding them automatically, and we ding the credit card. Why? Because we're trying to reduce. Remember, the whole thing is extreme profits with minimal management. So if you've got to spend a lot of time managing your customers, we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you've got to spend a lot of time managing your customers, then it's a headache, and it's not a pleasure anymore. Let's work for the people that want us to do the service. Let's stop working for people that just are a pain. Why do I need that in my life? I don't need that in my life. I'm 53 years old now, and I do not need to deal with painful customers. I only want to deal with customers that appreciate what we do and find the right ones. And uh, that change in life philosophy has made a huge difference in my own life. So credit card, we ding them automatically. If you want better credit card rates than using QuickBooks to do your credit card rates, then again, talk to us because we have special arrangements with uh, blue pay and with others to get you a good percentage because again if you're if you're dinging all your credit cards and you can save one or two percent on your on your credit card transaction fees that's that's bottom line that goes right down to your bottom line as profit so remember that okay next thing about a good customer so first we said location second we said able to pay the bill our third one now is their expectation meets our service think about it who are you what do you do what level of service do you perform for your customer? Make sure that you know what that is. I've, I've worked with, custom, with companies trying to help them out doing consulting and stuff, worked with companies where they'll be doing high-end residential on one property and then turn around and do a mow, blow, and go, go on the next property. That won't work. You can't do that because your, your um, crew leaders are not going to be able to change their mentality that fast. On the one, on the high-end residential, you're, you're going to pick up every single leaf and you're going to make sure it looks spotless before you leave and all that kind of stuff. But on the mow, blow, and go, you can't do that. That's not what you're doing. So you don't walk into Walmart and expect to be served in the same way that you would be served at Nordstrom's. Um, and they can't, you, you can't have the same person working in Walmart and working in Nordstrom's. It's not going to work. It's going to be different. So um, Define who you are and define what your level of service is, and then go out and we need to find the customers that actually are going to meet that expectation. So they're not going to have an expectation that you're going to be top of the line uh, if that's not, not who you are. In CLC, Clip Lawn Care, uh, we're a Moblo and Go. That's who we are. We're a Walmart. We've defined our, our company as being a company that you would hire to do your lawn maintenance instead of going down to Home Depot and buying a mower and doing it yourself. Okay, notice we did not define our company as making you have the absolute best service in the world or having you look see the best 
uh, having your your uh, uh, property look the best on the street or be the envy of everybody else or and no that's not what, that's not who we're selling ourselves at and every once in a while we'll get a customer that is attracted to our pricing because we have low prices um, is attracted to our pricing but then they have a desire to get this high end um, service that we don't offer and at that point we just tell them you know what you're not the best customer for us they don't they don't meet the criteria for being a good customer because their expectation does not meet what our service is and we're just out there to find the right people that meet our service we're not supposed to do we're not supposed to cut everybody's lawn we're not supposed to take over everybody's other company that are, that exists over there we're supposed to just do the ones that meet what we offer that want what we offer so these are some of the things we do we don't bag we don't do landscape construction we don't do special requests and we do small residential so some of the special requests could be different mower heights um, uh, stuff like that, that that people would say and we do small residential we don't do large residentials and we don't do um, and we don't do very much in the way of commercial and we'll talk a little bit more about that so location able to pay the price their expectation meets our service next one is low maintenance a minimal interaction with the company you know what we want customers but we don't want to sit on the phone and talk to them all day we don't want them to tell us about their dog and about everything that's happening to them and everything else now I was having dinner last uh, November when we had our conference I was having dinner with a company I forget exactly where they are but I was having dinner with a company that that's exactly what they do is they do high-end and very specialized residential and well you know sit on the phone contact your customer every week and all that that's fine if that's who you are and you're getting paid for that but again you're not going to get the Walmart customers which is fine and that's great not a problem but in our case a good customer is one who has low maintenance ease of communication so these are some of the things that tell us that this customer is not for us if they tell us I want to be called before you come and do the visit forget it you know what we're not going to do call aheads that's it sorry done okay the second one I want to talk to your guys when they're here or they come out to talk to the guys we had one one customer that it was an older gentleman and he'd come out every time our guys were out there cutting and he'd follow them around the property point out different things that they wanted to do we talked with the guys we said who on your route remember if you're paying piecework these guys are going to be your um, they're going to be your uh, partners in this whole thing and we asked him we said who do you want to drop out of your whole customer list tell me who you'd like to get rid of and all of them immediately said we want to get rid of that that customer because every time we're there he follows us around and we can't get our work done as fast as we want to so again low maintenance ease of communication um, call ahead to put the dog away no sorry we don't do that um, skip three different applications so we do do chemical apps also somebody has a very specialized well I want this one and this one but not that one no that's not who we are we don't do that um, customer that calls after every service we've had those before the customer will call you after every single service and say you missed this or you should have done that or we did this or we didn't again our expect their expectation is not meeting what our service is and it's just a pain it's like stop we're you know what we're not the best company for you go find somebody else customer that wants you to cut at a different height we kind of touched on that at the previous slide um, customer that wants to meet for standard service they're like well I'm gonna meet you there what time can you be there can you come at 8 o'clock at night so that we can talk about this And no that's not who we are sorry eh, you're not a good customer remember this is all about finding the right customer so you might want to go through these slides yourself and start deciding who is the best customer for you so let's go on to the next one consistency in contracts no exceptions to the rule I have a big writing on my whiteboard over here from uh, from a meeting that we had uh, two years ago now where we said you know what no more bi-weeklies no new bi-weeklies we're not getting any customer that calls us and says I want to be done every other week during the summer no it's too hard we don't want to do that so again that's who we are you might be different but the point of the matter is identify it so no exceptions to the rule ongoing contracts from year to year we started that last year where we actually have contracts that go on from year to year to year um, and they do and the contracts will self-renew um, and self-renew and get uh, be able to run from year to year without having to go back and try to get a customer's uh, signature and get them to approve it and all that kind of stuff and so 
um, that's how we're going and that's going to give us a better customer because we're not going to have to go back to them each time. So the other thing is normal pricing, no special prices. We don't want to create a, a special price for somebody. We don't want to tell them that, that um, oh, we're going to do this for you or that for you or there's a friend from church and we're going to run that because, again, if, if we see those little, those little pins up there, we're going to see those pins and they're going to turn red on us and we're going to say, why is this red one? And every time it's going to gum up our works because we're going to see it and somebody's going to say, oh, it's because remember you agreed to do this or that for the, that, that customer or something like that. No, we need to have normal pricing, no special prices. So um, that's what that is. So next one, property meets our equipment. In our case, we use a 52-inch um, stand-on mower from, from Wright Manufacturing, and then we use a 36-inch. Sometimes they're Skags, and sometimes they're Wright Manufacturing. So we're going back and forth between the two of them. But um, the property meets our equipment. So we don't want to do a three-acre lawn. We don't want to do an estate. We don't want to do a park. We don't want to do all those kind of things. The other thing is we look for newer um, residential developments, so newer neighborhoods that are, that are only a couple of years old, something that's not very old because we don't like trees. The reason we don't like trees is we hate leaf removal. We've understood that it's so hard for us to find um, a way for us to charge for leaf removal that the customer is satisfied with. So no large trees, small yards, newer developments, wide enough gates. We have to make sure that our gates are wide enough for our lawnmowers. Again, we don't want to have a special deal where we carry a 21-inch lawnmower on our on our on our uh, truck because somebody has, you know, in this day we do Mrs. Jones and that's got a small she's got a no. In fact, in some cases when we've had very good customers and they get a fence put in and the and the gate isn't wide enough, we've actually offered to pay to widen the gate in order to keep them as a customer. So um, if they're a good customer in all other ways and we just need to do that change, then we do that. No pools. We hate pools. We don't want to have, have to worry about getting grass clippings in a pool. We don't have to worry about trimming around it. We don't have to worry about all these things that have to do with pools. So we try to not have pools. Easy driving in and out. We don't want to have a place where it's hard to turn around or it's hard to get into, hard to get out of. Um, all those things come into our criteria for what is a good customer. I hope you're getting the idea that we've paid a lot of attention to figuring out who our customers are and who our best customers are. So no aeration on irrigation systems. If you have an irrigation system, you know what, we're going to mark you and we will not do an aeration on it. Um, at one point in time we started to do that because people assured us that the aeration, that the irrigation system was deep enough. And then we end up with problems, we have to come back, we have to fix the problem and it's just not there. Uh, dog run. That 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 was. Uh, we had a two-year contract on this uh, on this uh, dog run for a for the government, local county government around here, and it was such a pain. Um, it was nobody wanted to do it. None of our guys wanted to do it. They're on piecework and they're looking at it. And they're saying, "I hate this dog run. I can't stand this dog run. I don't want to do the dog run." Um, and it, it took too long. It took us too long to get paid for it. One time we called them and we said, you know what, you guys are 90 days overdue. And they answer us and they say, well, the person who does book working is out for two-week vacation, so we're not going to be able to do anything for you. Uh, are you kidding me? Do I really want a customer like that? Do I want somebody who, who, who keeps my money for that long and then doesn't even care about it? No, we don't want to do that. Um, yeah, there was a, a question about um, how do we raise the prices when we have year-to-year -year contracts. Um, well, there's a 30-day kickout clause. So uh, 30 days, if I if I send my customer a, a letter, then he has 30, 30 days, and then the new price will take, take effect. So anyway, but this is part of it. So this is how the property must meet our equipment. So that's what that is. Next one is a good customer is one who refers our service to others. Be careful with this, and we've talked a lot about referral systems in the past and things like that. And the problem with the referral system is you tend to give something away. You want to give them a free cut or you want to do something. Well, I would suggest that you're not thinking like the customer thinks. You are doing this job to get paid. So to you, it's valuable for you to get a job done, to, to mow the grass, for example, or something. But the customer doesn't think about it that way. The customer to get one free, if they're going to fall over themselves to refer you to somebody else so that they can get a free cut, that's 
again, to me, that psychologically, that's probably not the right customer for you. You actually want the customer, the best referral program that I've ever seen and that has ever worked for us is one where you just go and you ask the customer, say, do you have any friends or neighbors that would could use our service? Don't offer them anything. There's no reason to because it's not that big of a deal. If they're going to, it's not the difference in their life, uh, particularly somebody who's paying you, let's say, you know, $40 a cut. It's it's not the difference. It's not going to make a difference in their life for the, for you to give them $40 that they're going to go over and spend an hour trying to, you know, drum up business for you. But if you're doing a good job and they have a good feeling about you and psychologically they like you and they like what you've been doing for them by just asking them and saying, hey, would you do me a favor and give me a couple of other referrals, that's a good customer that you want. Goodwill is worth so much more than a couple of bucks. And the other thing is you think about it, if you make $800 in gross with a customer and you give them $40, you've given away 5% of your profit. So... Um, you've given away at 5% at profit, you've given that away. So if you're trying to do 25% profit, you just brought that down to 20%, and that's good. But let's say you're at 7 or 8%. Well, if you give away 40 bucks, you're now down to 1% or 2%. Well, that's that's too close, too close to the edge. So, um, so if you have a good customer, a good customer is going to refer other customers to you. Now, when we published the the we were going to be talking about customers and getting customers, uh, Jerry Tyndall out of Austin, Texas, sent us some really interesting emails and things that he does. So I wanted to go ahead and share those um, with you. So this is what Jerry says to us. Now, notice Austin, Texas is different than you know uh, Maryland. Uh, we have a whole different thing, and Texas has been going through a drought for the last few years. So this is what he said. He says, "I want to share something we did seven to eight years ago regarding this subject." Up until then, we took all clients that called for any lawn maintenance. 80% of our clients did not have sprinkler system. We mowed them bi-weekly until the drought that began eight years ago. That summer, we went six to eight weeks between mowings in June through September because it did not rain. In January the following year, the weatherman predicted another hot and dry year. That is when Todd, Todd is his son, and I looked at each other and said, no way. So we thought about it and made a major policy change. We decided that for from that point on to only accept new clients who had a sprinkler system and who wanted weekly lawn mowing during the growing season would sign one of our two annual service plans. One is 38 services per year and the other is 52. Now think about this. That's a major change to them. They have a lot of customers and they say, we're going to drop all these other customers and we're only going to go with the ones that have sprinklers. That year we turned out 80% of the people who called us for quotes and we grew 20% in sales. Let me read that again. That year we turned down 80% of the people who called us for quotes and we grew 20% in sales. The new policy saved us. The drought has continued in Austin since then and we have grown every year. Last year we grew almost $200,000 in sales. We attached an Excel sheet, an Excel chart of our sales history. On the far right we made a note of the year we changed the policy. Look what a difference in sales growth it made over the year before and ever since. We are so thankful that we raised our bar. Our bar. We have been really blessed. Okay, so what did he do? What did they do is they created this policy. And I've known about this. I've talked with Jerry in the past. And I've known about this policy change that he did a while back. And he just said, we're going to find the right customers that meet our criteria. That's really what he's saying. And we're going to turn down the other ones. They, they say in business, one of the most, most important words you can ever learn, particularly in sales and marketing, is no. You have to be able to say no to certain customers. So let's look at this spreadsheet. I know the numbers are, are a, little so, a little small, but you can zoom in on it if you need to. But um, notice he's, he's going from 2014 down. Okay, so the year he changed was 2007. They changed the policy. And you look at the annual growth. The annual growth was 21%, 17%, 8.5%, 9%, 7%, 7%, and 11% growth so far. And it looks like right now they're continuing that growth because they did 160 last January, last month, versus 145 the year before in the same month. So they're, they're growing again. But now they've got solid growth. You see what's happening here is they're growing because they know that these people have sprinkler systems and they know that these people are going to be requiring the service. What is important here? Find the right customers. Find the customers that meet your expectations that are in, lo in the location, that pay their bill, that are easy to carry, easy to maintain, easy to work with. 
and you just keep on at it until you find the right customer and they will stick with you for 10, 15 years. And that's how you create a system, which is a, a business, actually produces this other thing. So he, he continued to feed us with more information, and I thought this was pertinent. One other thing I forgot to mention was something it took about three years into the policy change for us to learn. Our new clients with Sprinkler Systems Weekly Service Annual Service Plan were worth three times the value of our old client base. No, sis, no sprinkler system, biweekly mowing, no service plan. Originally, we thought they would be worth twice, biweekly versus weekly. But the fact that they had invested in a sprinkler system and they were willing to pay for twice the mowings meant that they wanted a much nicer lawn and landscape. So they also bought fertilization, color plants, new shrubs, and shrub trimming. Think about that. We wouldn't have thought that if we would have put it down into our um, spreadsheet to start with. But you find out that if you find the right customer that meets your um, property and meets your, that has the property that meets your services, your equipment, your location, the expectation, et cetera, then you can have this kind of thing. So that's what we're trying to concentrate on today. Think about your customers. Think about them. So what do we do? How do we find a good customer? And I've talked about this before. We do the $20 special. $20 special to us is at $20 for your first mowing. We do door hangers. We, um, why do we do door hangers? Why don't we do yellow pages? Well, like I said, if you do a yellow page ad, you're going to see it. It's going to, people are going to be calling you from all over the place and it's going to be hard to say no. It's going to be hard to turn it down. Whereas if we do door hangers, we actually canvas a neighborhood. We go into a neighborhood and we, we hang a door hanger on every one of the doors. We know that if somebody got the door hanger on their door, they already are in the right location. They already have the right size lawn. They already have, there's a whole lot of things that are going, they're, they're near, they're in our area that we want to develop, they're, we have similar customers to them, da 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 et cetera, and so forth. Other reason we do the $20 mowing, and, and this is one of the questions Glenn likes to ask, is, is um, has anybody ever gotten a maid service? And a lot of people will say, well, yes, but a lot of people will say no. And why, have, why don't you have a maid service? Well, do you know how much it costs? And a lot of us will say, no, I don't. And, we'll, and then we can ask you, why don't you know what it costs? Well, because I've never asked for somebody to come out and give me a, a bid. Why haven't you done that? Because you don't know whether you want to pay it or not. You put it off. I hate those jewelry stores. It's Valentine's Day today. I hate those jewelry stores that you go in and nobody tells you any prices until you have to ask for, for them to tell you what the price is. It makes you feel like a, like a cheapskate. But um, I just don't like that. So we came up with this idea with this twenty dollar first mowing. I don't I don't know of anybody else that was doing it. Probably somebody else is doing it somewhere, but we do it. And we came up with this so that we could go and they would know, okay, I'm gonna spend twenty dollars. What's that equal to? Two pizzas or something? I'm gonna spend twenty dollars, I'm gonna get my lawn mowed, and they're gonna leave me a bid. Well, that prevents us, remember, we hate overhead, so it prevents us from having an estimator out on the road because our guys can do this $20 special. And since they're on piecework, they will come back to us and they will tell us, this is how long it took us to do this lawn. This is what you ought to charge. They know that we want to make $45 per man per hour. So do we do the $20? We see whether the gates are right. We see all these things. We see if they have a pool. We see if they have a lot of dog poop in the backyard. Um, we see all these different aspects. It's basically, it's a trial run for us. And we do the trial one, we get 20 bucks, it's not a huge deal, but it's better than giving away a free estimate and not getting anything. So we get the $20, we create a relationship, a trusting relationship with the customer, and if they meet everything that, that, that we want them to, um, all of our, our criteria, then we, get to, uh, then we start mowing their lawns. And notice the other thing is we have employee buy-in. Why? Because our guys are actually doing the job and they're actually leaving the estimate on the door and saying this is how much I'll do it for. So I don't have the fight that goes on between your labor and your estimator saying, why did you estimate this? I can't believe blah, 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 blah. And you get rid of all that and you're creating this beautiful business. Again, that's the name of the book. The beautiful business, lawn maintenance in the beautiful business. That's the idea behind it. So we love this $20 special. We have used a couple of other things, and some of them have not worked. The Val Pack that we used a couple years ago was a huge waste of money. $15,000 we wasted and got nothing. Again, why the Val Pack went to a lot of different places, and it just it just didn't work. People didn't. Again, you kind of look at and see who is going to be opening this and who's looking for it. And the Valpac people are looking for a free this or a free that. 
and it didn't work for us. It might work for you. Eh, it didn't work for us. Angie's List last year, we went with that. Um, they they required us to sign up for a year, and we just said no, we're not going to sign up for a year. We, we because we don't really care about the winter time. We shut down for the winter, so um, we got back to the salesman. You can always do this with the salesman, almost always. And we just got back and we said, you know what, we're not going to go for a year, so we won't do anything. Or you can do a six months. He he says, well, I'm sorry, we can't. Hangs up with us, comes back the next uh, <laughs> within like one or two days and says, hey, if you're still interested, I talked to my supervisor and we're going to give it. So we did that. Um, we did the Angie's list and that worked. Um, and we also did, I didn't put this on here, but we also have done the uh, um, route drop. I forget what it's called, but it's for the United States Post Office. You can bring your flyers in, and um, that postal guy will drop one of these into every mailbox on his route. And that's, that's very, um, it's cost effective, and it's, a good, it's another way of getting this $20 special out to everybody. Um, so those are... Those are ways that we use. Um, mainly, we use the door hangers. We've also used the postal route, and now we're using Angie's List. Um, those are three of them. Back to Jerry Tyndall again. He sent us some really good stuff. Um, keeping your best customers. So go back and watch the watch the uh, webinar on job costing, and you'll it's key number three, and you'll see that that is crucial to knowing who your best customer is. And we say this in that webinar as well. Send them some chocolates. Well. This is what Jerry Tyndall has been doing. Um, look at the quote at the bottom there. It says, we are sharing a Valentine's message in a small box of Whitman's chocolates with all 900 of our clients. We bought 1,000 plastic bags with a hole to hang on the client's doorknobs. Each of our crews inserts the Valentine and a box of chocolates in the bag as they drive to the next house. Russell Stover, who owns Whitman's, sold us the $1.77 boxes of chocolate for 75 cents each. Freight prepaid from Kansas City our total cost is $1.09 each, but our return is many times that. We are receiving some wonderful emails from our customers who have already got their Valentine and candy. This is just a couple of days ago. Today is Valentine's Day, and he does that as a personal touch back to his customers. Um, find more like them. Do you think they go around and they talk to their neighbors and say, wow, don't you get cutting edge? Aren't you doing this? I mean, this is it's, it's what we've been preaching forever is have to do this. Sign multi-year contracts. Once you find them, once you have this customer, make sure that you sign that multi-year contract and keep them going um, like you should. So um, this is one way. We've always said, you know, you find somebody that you're, that's paying you $50 per man per hour, buy them a box of chocolates. You know, for $1. nine each, you got it done. Amazing. Use your website uh, to manage your customers. You all, if you want to, go to our uh, website, cliplawncare.com, take a look at it and see what, how we do it. Um, one thing that Tony Bass taught us is always include people in your website. So if you have a landing page, include some people in it. People like to see people. Um, give them the idea, not just a beautiful lawn, but include some people enjoying it, doing something with it, um, having some fun there on it. But um, go and browse our website. You'll have the ideas that we come up with, the ideas that, that we have had for ours and that, and that work for us. Um, so find those customers. Uh, that's the that's the key. There is you got to find the customers that meet your criteria. I've given you a bunch of different ones. This is what you got. We got the Sochi Olympics going on. Go for the gold. Get those golden customers, and when you attract them all into one plot, one spot, and they're low maintenance, and they're just right, and they're just the kind of customer you like, and you're giving the service that they expect and that they want, you've got this beautiful relationship that goes on between you and them. And and it um, and it just creates this beautiful business where you have minimal management with maximum uh, with maximum profits, and that's what we're trying to teach you here. Is this is one of the four keys um, that we have. So um, your success is our business, and that's what we're talking about here. Is we want to make you more successful. Uh, I'd like to remind you again, if you're interested in that franchise idea, um, send us an email and let us know your thoughts, uh, good or bad. But um, so go for the gold. Get those customers and be successful. Cherish, you going to finish this off? Yeah, I'm just going to go over a couple of things here before we end. Um, thanks, Dave, for that great presentation. If anyone, as you're watching, you missed a slide or anything along those lines, don't worry. I'll be sending this out to everyone that registered just as soon as it's posted. 
And like I said earlier, due to the volume of requests we have for the site visits, we're offering that alternative site visit here in Frederick, Maryland, just for those of you who didn't hear in the beginning, who attended or came into the webinar later on. Um, it'll include an in-depth presentations and a lot of one-on-one -on -one time um, with the professionals that we have here on CLIP and business principles and so forth. We're only accepting four companies, so it's very limited. We want to give lots of one-on-one -on -one time to each of the companies that come. So give us a call as soon as you can if you have any interest at all just to see all of the details. It'll be at the very end of February. Um, so like I said, give us a call if you have any interest at all to see if it is something that you would want to do. Uh, there will be a survey as soon as the webinar is closed. It's only about four or five questions long. We'd really appreciate if you could just stick around for a minute to fill that out um, until the webinar is officially closed and it'll pop up and you can fill that out for us. We appreciate all of your input. Thank you so much for being our customer. Um, we love the opportunity to serve you and to help you succeed. I hope you have a great weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. And as always, your success is our business.